So to start building reusable rockets, you're going to want to start out getting some practice with landing for stages. If you can't uh, land and or control these first stages effectively, you're going to have a really hard time landing orbital class rockets. So to, so to start out, I'm just going to build a real quick test stage using some uh, swivel engines. In this case, I only need three because this is going to be a partially fueled stage, so the upper tank is going to be empty. In this case, I'm just using engine power alone. I'm not adding RCS systems of any kind. So it'll be completely controlled using the vector capability of the swivel engines. So just finishing up here with the landing gear. So I'm going to try to land on top of the VAB in this case. If you can do this effectively, it'll be a pretty good experience for landing actual orbital class rocket boosters because you'll have practice with how to throttle effectively. Translation isn't so important if you can land or have a descent profile that uh, brings you down retrograde all the way down. So you won't need to do translation like horizontally unless you're trying to do precision landings. But still, throttling is probably the most important part if you're just doing a retrograde, pure retrograde, no translation landing burn. So in this case, you can see that with only three engines, this is throttling pretty effectively for this size stage. The problem with having a lot of first stage engines and not having them on action groups to deactivate only a, uh, the outer, like um, six out of nine engines, is that when you ignite them all at once, the throttle increments make it hard to control the vehicle because it has such a high thrust to weight ratio with a small amount of fuel in the tanks. But with fewer engines, it's much easier to control. So I'm going to start building an orbital class rocket here. You can see I'm using a 18 ton payload. It's entirely possible to get some respectable payloads with, with these medium sized rocket boosters. So I'm, <laughs> I get really annoyed when I see tutorials on how to do this and it shows a modest payload with, you know, a giant rocket. But in this case, I've sandwiched the probe core for the first stage between two tanks. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to attach these engines individually so that I can add only a few of them on action groups to shut down. But yeah, I only have nice things to say about these DLC Bobcat engines because uh, <laughs> their, their specific impulse is pretty similar to vector engines. So they're like low tech vector engines with slightly uh, poor or not quite as good performance, but still pretty respectable. Thrust to weight ratio, thrust, and specific impulse at sea level which for your first stage is going to be a big deal for doing suicide burns and for doing the majority of the ascent, which is going to be done at low, uh, low, low altitude. So as you can see, I'm adding individually, uh, individual engines on action groups to shut down or to toggle. In this case, I'm using the thrust plates so that I don't have to worry about uh, struts in the interstage. But yeah, I don't recommend using swivel engines because they get terrible specific impulse at sea level. So Bobcat engines are much better and also have a higher thrust. So your thrust to weight ratio at liftoff is going to be a lot higher. The problem then becomes you'll want the action groups to toggle some of the engines because coming back down, running all engines at once 
is going to be hard to control because even small throttle increments drastically throw the vehicle around coming down. So you'll come down to hover near ground level and it'll just take off straight up. <laughs> but anyway, I'm using a pretty standard profile in this case. I want to land the first stage on the peninsula across this ocean rather than landing back at the uh, space center. In this case, because the boost back burn is really wasteful. So if I can just land the first stage over on the next continent, it saves a lot of fuel, which I can use to boost the second stage up to a higher, uh, higher velocity. The uh, I also only have nice th things to say about the DLC Cheetah engine because it's really high performance. <laughs> Not a lot of power, but de definitely a very good specific impulse for these medium stages. So I'm going to start my reentry profile here. In this case, you can see we've barely made it across to the peninsula over here. Yeah. You'll want to make sure you're in terrain mode rather than sea level mode for your altimeter so you can judge when to start your landing burn. So I'm only running, running three in, or two engines, as you can see. These uh, Titan uh, analog engines use two nozzles like the Gemini. Uh, rockets use. So uh, I technically have two engines, which makes it very easy to land without overshooting. So yeah, this is just over 18 tons to orbit, so pretty respectable. If you were doing a boost back burn, you couldn't get nearly as much payload up to this same low carbon orbit as if you were landing on the next continent over, just due to the efficiency gains of the high performance first stage. So moving on to medium rockets, or large rockets, it's slightly different. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use a higher tech level uh, probe control. But in this case, I want to get a jumbo tank worth of fuel up to orbit. So this is a pretty respectable payload for this class of rocket if you're going to do it expendable mode. So I want to get a similar payload size up to low carbon orbit using a reusable rocket, which is going to be pretty, pretty difficult. I'm going to need a good uh, high performance first stage and second stage. In this case, I'm again sandwiching the probe core and battery between two tanks. In this case, for these larger stages, I'm, I am going to use uh, RCS thrusters. But as you can see, pretty large first stage. I'm going to use a, um, a structural tube to cover the engines. And in this case, I'm going to be using skipper engines, which are like the Bobcat engines only they're not DLC, and they're, again, like uh, low-tech vector engines. I generally don't like using vector engines because they have... they're uh, quite costly. And in, in this case, you can see that the, the cost of this vehicle isn't very high. Yeah. Landing gear, RCS, air brakes, probe core, pretty but relatively straightforward. So I can put action groups on stuff. In this case, you want to make sure that your thrust weight ratio is correct because with these lower power engines, you're, they're quite weak compared to vector engines. So the uh, skipper engine, for example, is more often a second stage engine than a first stage engine. So it gets pretty good performance across all altitudes. Not quite as good as the vector engine, but still pretty good for first stages. So I'm going to go straight up initially here because I'm going to get higher up as fast as I can with these engines that have lower performance at low altitude. But from there, it's the same type of flight profile as before. 
or I'm just trying to land the first stage over on the next continent. Yeah. As you can see, a lot of the the uh, the ascent is done with a pretty small amount of fuel, but as you get higher, the efficiency of the engines gets better. So you can do a lot of you can get a lot of delta v at higher altitudes. As you can see, the trajectory is growing rapidly as the vehicle gets lighter. Yeah. Second stage is going to pretty much use all its fuel just to get into low carbon orbit. If you have like a station there and you're trying to build a refueling depot, which is what you'd use these large heavy tanks for, is refueling depots for uh, low carbon orbit space stations. So that's a jumbo worth tank again, which is like 36 tons. So a pretty respectable payload for a reusable rocket. Often for this size, people opt to uh, go SSTO with the first stage, which means that your payload to orbit is very small. Looking at you, Matt Lown. <laughs> so in this case, you want to switch back to the first stage before it dips below 25 kilometers or so. But with a high, high thrust uh, second stage engine, you can do your orbital insertion before it drops too low. People say this is a this is a problem, but honestly, it's pretty easy to land your first stage or switch to it before it dips that low, unless you're trying to do boost back burns to land at the Kerbal Space Center. But yeah, standard landing. In this case, I'm using uh, the air brakes because these heavier, larger tanks tend to not deaccelerate as fast due to drag. So you need that extra bit of drag from the air brakes to slow down faster. So pretty strong standard landing. In this case, I have to throttle pretty low because I didn't add the first stage engines on action groups. I'm running them all at once. And this is where the RSS really comes in handy to stop the stage from tipping over if you're landing on like slopes, which is a big problem for larger tanks because they tend to fall over more easily on the smaller landing gear or smaller relative landing gear. Yeah, that's 64 tons or uh, 36, sorry, 36 tons to orbit. So pretty respectable for a, a uh, reusable launch vehicle.